gamers all around the world today we're doing the new updated ottoman guide now i do have an ottoman guide where you go one tc all out aggression and that guide still works so you can check it out my youtube channel it's still there i don't know what's it called search ottoman guide or something it'll pop up but today i wanted to do another guide because i haven't done an ottoman guide in a while and ottoman right now is probably the strongest civ so i figured people are probably gonna play it so might as well do a little guide today i'm going to be showing you how to do 2tc ottoman versus pretty much any civ obviously there's some civs where you got to be a little bit more careful but here we go so uh this is against malians which ottoman is uh quite good against so most matchups pretty much every matchup you want to start with um five on stone immediately carry it home drop it off then go wood you want to chop 50 wood and then you put nine workers on food and i'm going to build military school you can build military school with one worker or two workers that's fine and most of the time you want to be building uh your production in the back of your base so like either here is fine or here avoid building your production forward because if you lose military schools you're that's it game's over so once i drop off 50 food i'm gonna go on food making a house also don't make a house where you're gonna build your military building so have a little bit of a plan so i'm gonna have nine on food right now and then three on gold now the only civ you do not want to get military school uh in dark age against is english what i would su suggest you to do is just age up quicker like do a normal 7-3 age up and then just play from there uh and english is probably the hardest matchup for ottoman i would say jushi legacy and china are also pretty rough but doable uh english is rough because they push before you get your military schools out so I would suggest you guys go on AoE4 World website and find Twitch VOD Finder, I think it's called. And you can find Ottoman versus English if you're interested in that matchup specifically and try to, you know, get some more information on that. Uh, now, against all the other civs, you want to be harassing with your first spearmen. So just go across the map. In this case, I'm going to go for the, you know, the houses and stuff like that. If you're playing against French, attack their gold. If you're playing against Abbasid, attack the gold and the stone. You know, stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to speed up a little bit. The first pyramid is going out. Um, when you're playing against Rus, you can also use Spearman to kill the wolves. So that you deny the bounty. You can also do that. And the moment you got 200 gold, you're going to want to move your three villagers from gold away. And uh, because you only need 200 for the age up, which we're going to do right now. Now, you're going to go Twin Minaret. Now, one thing to note, avoid building your Twin Minaret here, okay? I, I thought this is far enough, but I should have put it one hex to the right. Now, the reason for that is uh, you want your workers to be on these berries. If these berries are too close, they're going to go here and then run away there. And that's not what you want. So I've, sometimes I see people in lower leagues build this like right here. Don't do that. It's you're gonna waste a lot of food income. So uh, yeah, that's it. Now as I'm aging up, I'm gonna leave four on food. I'm gonna put eight on wood. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna chop two trees here, and then I'm gonna go wood plus stone because I want to get that second town center. Meanwhile, I'm torching the houses on the other side, so nothing crazy there. And you can see the work, you can watch the, the video again and see the worker split, um, how it goes. But in general, like, as long as you're, you know, res you need pretty much the same resources on stone and wood. So try to have around the same amount of workers on both. Um, now, you should be putting uh, five villagers on uh, Twin Minaret. Because five without any upgrades is the amount that... Twin Minaret can support. And then later, when you get Horticulture level 1, you only need 4. If you get Horticulture level 2 and 3, you only need 3 workers on the uh, Twin Minaret. Now, if that's too much for you to like focus and like take away a worker whenever you get an upgrade, if you just leave a 4 on Twin Minaret, that's fine. But the most efficient way to put right now without upgrades is uh, 5 workers. If you don't want to deal with that, just put four and you're done with for a while. 
Um, now, sometimes people ask me if they should be building the second military school now before second TC. No, the first thing you want to do is get a second town center and then build military school later. So, right now, I switch to Sipahi because you have three spearmen. So, most of the time, what's going to happen is the opponent will be making now archers. And then when they come out with archers, you have Sipahi, so then they have to react to that. And you're basically putting pressure while getting a second town center. So you can see I have 10 on wood right now, 6 on stone, 5 on twin minaret. Uh, and I'm rallying a couple of more on stone. And uh, where you should be putting your TC with Ottoman is on the gold. Now, other civs usually put their second TC on like deer or something. If my deer were here, I would probably put the TC there so I can get both deer and gold. But because of Anatolian Hills, which is the Vizier pointed, gives you 8 sheep, you don't really need uh, to go out on the map too, too much. So, uh, I build a TC with the woodworkers. And what I also like to do is I like to get 300 extra stone right now. Why 300? Well, because I want to build another military school in Feudal Age, right? So I can have two. And once I get Vizier Point to unlock another military school, that's another 100 stone. And then once I age up, that's another 100 stone. So I like to just get 300 stone right now and be done with. Uh, so I don't have to mine stone anymore. And that's going to be done pretty, pretty quickly. So, and you can see this is why you don't build Twin Minaret. You saw how two workers went here? That's why you want to stay away from the bears. So I'm going to be building a uh, TC with 8 villagers and this is a pretty good spot because I'm also protecting the wood line so that's very nice. And basically once the second TC goes up, I'm going to have food under TC, gold under TC and wood line between the two TCs so I'm protected. My production is under TC so I am chilling right now. Now, um, if you're playing against a Knight Civ like French or JD where they're making a Knight immediately, the only difference you would do is the moment you age up and you start gathering wood you're gonna make a barracks upgrade your spearmen and then keep the spearmen back home and you can also make one or two extra spearmen to deal with knights okay that's it you don't need to change your build order in some crazy way that's it uh just to have enough units to protect but if you're playing against Civ that's booming kind of like malian you can just go you know naked second tc and now I'm going to put 8 workers on wood. Once the TC is completed, I have 300 stone. And what I'm going to do now next is get the second military school, get blacksmith. And, you know, you can use extra wood to start walling. You can use extra wood to get upgrades. Now, some people like to um, get, like, no upgrades and just rush castle, castle immediately. If you're playing against someone that's being super, super aggressive... Okay, so let's say I'm getting like all in or something. I would put five on gold or six on gold. Five, six is fine. And then I would put one TC rallied onto food, one TC rallied onto wood. And I would add production buildings, make units and try to defend. Uh, this game, I played it as if the opponent, I mean, he was booming as well. So I played it as if I didn't need any defense. Usually if you're getting like super all in, you don't want to be getting like all the upgrades in the world. You want to actually make units immediately and slowly getting get upgrades. But in this game, because my opponent was going cow boom and I was going to TC, I'm just getting all the upgrades. So I'm getting uh, horticulture first, then I'm getting specialized pick. I got Anatolian Hills already popped, so I have a lot of sheep. I'm getting wheelbarrow, I'm getting double broad axe, and my economy is in a really, really good spot now. I got blacksmith for faster production. And uh, right now, my goal is to rush castle and unlock the two extra military schools so you can really, you know, use Ottoman to their advantage, which is mass produce units for free. I'm getting plus one ranged attack in case the opponent attacks me so that my town centers have extra attack. Uh, with each arrow, which is nice. And meanwhile, what you want to do with these Sipahis, by the way, is just harass and run around and try to do any damage you can. So whether you're getting all in, or for example, if you're getting all in, you always want to put military schools on Sipahis and like every once in a while produce a, a Mechter. And then you want to build barracks and archer rangers for spearmen archers. So you want to have kind of like horsemen, aka Sipahi, spearmen and archers at the same time. So the extra wood, I used it for all the upgrades. Now I'm doing this mega wall just to secure that side of the map. And the whole time 
I rallied villagers uh, on gold and the other TC on um, food, so I can age up as fast as I can because I was using a lot of golds to get the uh, all the upgrades. I'm gonna age up now. If you're not in a hurry, just age up with eight villagers. That's more than okay. Uh, because you don't gain anything by super rushing castle in this position, right? Now, from here on out, you can do a lot of things, right? The possibilities are endless, in a way. You can go stables, and you can go knights. Um, and, and, like, harass your opponent and go around and, you know, try to do damage. Uh, you can go the safe route, which is just make barracks, archer ranges, and then go men at arm archer or men at arm janissary, depending what the opponent has. So you don't want to produce janissaries until the opponent has cavalry. Or if the opponent already has cavalry, you want to produce janissaries immediately in castle together with men at arms. So once I age up, I'm going to try to get mosque to get the relics. Um, I'm adding barracks, I'm adding archer ranges. I got the second vizier point for the uh, military school. I'm immediately throwing down third military school. And in a second, I'm going to throw down the fourth military school as well. And now I got four military schools, Imperial Armory, two Town Center, and I'm just pumping units. I'm still trying to harass here. I didn't find almost any damage this game. I actually lost two villagers. Um, and if you have too much gold, just produce, just get upgrades. You know, like just produce some Janissaries, get some upgrades, uh, and get that going. So you can see right now, immediately I'm starting all the upgrades. My eco is great. Um, and uh, yeah. So, uh, right now, because I played against Malian and I'm actively scouting, I see no um, cavalry. What I'm producing is men at arms. I produce some Janissaries here and there just in case, in case like mass sofa shows up. And now I'm producing, I produce a few crossbows again for the sofas. And because I didn't have wood, so I couldn't produce archers, but in a second I'm gonna switch to just mass archer men at arm production. Uh, and my military schools are now producing. Uh, men at arms Because Malian has a very hard time dealing with men at arms now if I was playing against a more Ranged unit heavy Sith, I would probably be producing like men at arms from barracks archers or crossbows if they have their men at arms on their own and Then I would be producing sipahis or knights from military schools so that the opponent requires different um, Responses to your army basically I got moss cops, so I'm gonna try to get some relics as well. And, um, yeah. And basically, you go from like having no units to just having crazy, crazy amount of units, which you will see in a moment. So, right now, you can see it's like 28 to 21, right? But now my production is finishing, and now the unit pump starts. So, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Let's try to get denied. You can see he's in Malian, by the way, is one of the civs that can like mass mass produce units. Uh, don't Musafari counterman at arms? Yes. So the best thing you can do against Malian is force them to make Musafari warriors and then do huge backline of archers because archers absolutely demolish Musafari. So you kind of want to bait them into that. And then obviously you have a Mangunal to deal with Javid first. So he goes in here, but you can see 31 against 50, but I have plenty of units to deal with this. He only has 10 Musafari warriors, I have 11 men at arms, so that trade is not going to work out. Uh, I'm getting uh, range damage upgrades. I'm rallying a lot of villagers on wood right now because I want to make sure I can produce archers constantly, which I am right now. And you can see that military count is getting very, very close to one another, right? Earlier I was behind, but now it's just climbing constantly. And this matchup specifically, uh, you don't really need to do anything at this point to win. You can just wait to get 200 supply and kill the Malian player. Um, because at this point it's, it's pretty good for Ottoman, it's Ottoman favored. But if you're playing against other civs, if you're going for more cavalry based style, obviously you want to harass, you want to go around the map. But I just wanted to do like an easier version of this playstyle and guide because not everyone has a lot of APM to go around and like harass and do stuff. So I just wanted to do a version where you're just sitting in your base and just making units and then you go attack and win. I sent some archers to deal with this. Uh, he goes back. 
I got two relics, so, you know, he got three, I got two, that's all right. And if at any point, right, I see the opponent making cavalry, I will immediately switch military schools to janissaries. So this is my worker split right now. Once I got all the upgrades, I only have eight on gold because I also have two relics. So I'm not producing a lot of gold units. I'm only producing archers, men at arms uh, at this moment. So I want most of my villagers on food, wood, and when you're running out of food, you slowly transition to farms. Someone asked about trade landmark. It's viable, but it's not very good. It's too greedy. The trade landmark for Ottoman is kind of like a second TC, right? So if you, you cannot go to TC and trade landmark. You can go trade landmark and make traders, but you cannot, you cannot do both. That's basically going 3 TC. It's too greedy. Why not skip Dark Age Military School to get a faster TC? You can if you want to, but I always prefer to put pressure on my opponent. Because Military School doesn't only put pressure on your opponent, it doesn't allow them to gather gold for Wheelbarrow. Um, it forces them to make Archer Ranges to deal with Spearmen. If they're Knight Civ, you will have Spearmen to defend against Knights, so you don't need to produce Spearmen, you can just upgrade them and that's it. And once they go archers, you go, you just change your military school to Sipahi, and then I have to make spearmen for that. So you're doing a lot of different things with just one military school, right? Whereas if you skip military school in order to get TC, let's say 30 seconds faster, or even 40 seconds faster, you will gain a villager or two, but you're gonna be open for business to get harassed. And then you have to respond to what they're doing, so then you're not dictating the game. So the fight happens here. He has some Springles, but you can just run away with Mangonos. You don't need to engage. If you don't have Springles of your own, just put them in the back. And now we have the fight. So I have 38 men at arms. For him to kill 38 men at arms, he's gonna need like 40 or 50 Musafati warriors. So at this point, my ranged units, 37 archers, are just A moving, mowing everything down. I sent some men at arms to deal with uh, Spring Elves, so maybe I can bring in the Mangonos. And slowly, I get Mango uh, Spring Elves killed. Now my Mangos can come in. And this fight is not even close. I mean, I still have 29 men at arms just in this fight. So I lost, what, 7, 8 of them? That's it. Um, and at this point, I think I saw him already make sofas. But, I think I'll see it in a second if I haven't seen it already. Yeah, here I see sofas and you will see me immediately switch to Janissaries in the military schools. Give it a moment. Any moment now. Yeah, there's the Janissary switch. And right now, all I need to do is, if he goes Masso or something, I can just switch to some spears, some men at arms. And then I can produce uh, Janissaries plus Archers. If I'm playing against a Man at Arms Civ, obviously you want to go crossbows. Uh, in general, this is how you do the uh, Ottoman 2 Town Center. Now, depending which Civ you play, you have to do like different units. Obviously, like if a Civ is French or, or JD, you can even preemptively make Janissaries. Or if you're playing against Rus. But... Most of the time, the opponent should never be going for cavalry in the first place. Like, if they're going for cavalry, they're probably going to lose. So most of the time, you should be ready with archers plus crossbows combo, rather than, you know, making a shit ton of janissaries or something like that. So, that's kind of it. Uh, that is kind of it. And from this point on, uh, you can see I have 40 in wood, 29 on food. So I would make more farms right now, and soon I can go imperial. Uh, the Imperial Landmarks, you pretty much always, always want to go with Istanbul Observatory because uh, it improves the influence provided by the University and Blacksmith 2 plus 100%. So um, that means that not only your production buildings will produce faster, but also your Mechamid Imperial Armory will produce great bombers faster and five military schools will be producing 60% faster, right? Yeah, 60% faster. Yeah, that's pretty good. The Seagate Castle is not very good. It's a pretty crap keep. This thing where it increases movement speed of your trade is, is completely useless. And armor, uh, whatever you're trading, you don't need armor on your traders. If you need armor on your traders, you're probably messed up already. And uh, you don't really need to trade with Ottoman in the late game anyway because of all the free units you're getting. So, 
that is it. If you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed it. Check out, uh, again, on AOE4 World, you can find a lot of Twitch VOD Finder, uh, kind of like games of Ottoman players playing against different civs. So if you're struggling, you can check, uh, um, you know, out there which civ you're struggling with, like Ottoman versus English or Ottoman versus whatever. And then you will see how the uh, top gamers do it. That's it. YouTube gamers, check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now. Twitch gamers, keep going.